can win something. That's why we have a jury. And we have a jury um, with five very different companies. And um, so everybody knows who the jury is. I like to call everyone on the stage. First one is Laurent Probst, partner of PricewaterhouseCoopers in Luxembourg. Maybe Laurent, you describe a bit your role. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'm coming from Luxembourg. And uh, first of all, I'm passionate about sea. And that's first, uh, first uh, interest. The second thing is that I'm uh, operating the Blue Economy Investment Platform on behalf of the EU Commission, DG Mare. And uh, just as a key, and to be very concrete, we are still looking for very good companies to be present at the uh, Investor Day, nine, uh, March 9th in Brussels, where you can meet a lot of investors. There will be about 400 investors present also at that moment. With, so you can come and talk, and I will present it later in the day also uh, in, in, in this session. Okay, thank you, Laurent. We hand the microphone over to Gabriella Richardson, founder and CEO of Yachting Ventures. Welcome. Um, thank you. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, so I'm the founder of Yachting Ventures. Um, we basically support startups in the leisure marine and yachting industries to raise investment, um, scale, increase their brand awareness. And um, we've been working with um, the organizers of the show and the European Boating Association to bring together this lineup of startups today. So I know all the founders personally. So good luck to all of you. And um, yeah, I'm excited. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, next one here is Emily Penn. Um, <laughs> familiar face here at Boat Dusseldorf. I mean, you. I mean, the first one was a couple of years when you won this award. Maybe you tell us a bit about your background. Absolutely. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Emily Penn. Um, I have spent the last 15 years mostly at sea studying the issue of plastic pollution, particularly microplastics, um, and doing the scientific research to try and work out how it's getting into the environment so that we can then present the best possible solutions to prevent it getting in in the first place. Um, I've been at Boat, I think, since 2015. Um, so yeah, it's uh, been a few years. Um, great to be back and really nice to see this initiative taking place. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Um, Clyde Hutchinson, general partner, team ABC Ventures. Okay, he has to drop his coffee and then, all right. Good morning, Clyde. Good morning. Hi, I'm Clyde Hutchinson. I am another investor. So I know Gab Gabby very well. I know the Blue Invest program very well. So we are early stage investors in transportation. So we look at land, air, and sea, but also look at coastal tourism and especially restoration of habitats. We tend to be like to be first check-in, so we're really, really early, so we tend to like to work with startup founders at a very early stage, and we are globally focused. Okay, thank you very much. Eden Cohen, Chairman, Marine Innovation Association and CEO, Pick a Peer. Yes, good morning. Hello. hello, good morning, thank you so much. So my name is Eden Cohen, I'm one of the founders of Pick a Peer. Pick a Peer is a technology company that is focusing on the recreational boating on the marina business uh, mainly. Um, I would say my background is uh, focusing on coastline management. This is how we got to here today. I'm also representing the Marine Innovation Association, which is a full member in ICOMIA that drive the digital transformation that is happening throughout the entire marina business on the coastline and focusing on the marinas and other um, aspects of the boating industry. Uh, thank you so much. Good luck to all the founders. I'm really happy to see here today that the uh, age is getting younger. So I feel very good about uh, the future of the rec recreational boating industry. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Now you take it with you. Okay. Thank you very much. So um, it will work like this. We will have uh, four presentations, five to seven minutes. For the uh, presenters, uh, after five minutes, I will raise my hand so you know you have to come to an end somehow. Jury can ask questions after each uh, presentation. And um, after we, we, we finished all of them, um, we will have the winner after a couple of minutes. So um, we'll all be done this morning until 12.15, uh, 12.30. 12 the first one, the first presenter is uh, Lukas Unterweger. CZ or CZ, CZ from Austria, and I made a note. Um, you have already the right address uh, for a startup, Science Park, 
the high tech incubator, right? Based in Graz in Austria, correct. Correct. The stage is yours, huh? thank you. Thank you very much. So a very good morning to all of you from my side. I'm very excited to be here. Actually, it would be my third time, but both was canceled two times. So now it's my first time. And I'm very happy to tell you a little bit um, about CZ, making sea life easy, and how everything started. So actually, it was coming out of a problem that our founder experienced when being on a sailing trip himself. Uh, and uh, it was difficult for him to find information about and around marinas. So shortly after his trip, he decided, OK, I will make a guide for boaters about marinas, where they can find information about the marina, around the marina, and basically find everything they want to know before they go there. So um, that was really the starting point for CZ. But very quickly, we found that the users actually also want to book a marina. So like you would book a flight online, or you, well, how you would book a hotel online. And uh, then we started really introducing this platform aspect to CZ. And our platform is made of two sides. On the one hand side, we have the Marina Finder, where we are right now having around 300,000 users in order to find all that information around the marinas and also book a place in the marina. Reviews and ratings, that's of course all happening on the platform itself. The counterpart, just to give a little bit of background information about CZ, is the Marina Manager. So this is the interface that the Marina managers, the Marina operators are using in order to interact with their customers, to manage their profiles, manage their bookings, and really facilitate that business on our platform. So where does sustainability come into that? I've talked uh, to you a little bit about the product now, that we are this cool booking platform for marinas. But um, if you think about the community, these 300,000 people that we're having after our first two years, this com community really gives us a lot of leverage and a lot of um, reach also to promote sustainability, <coughs> excuse me, to promote sustainability to the boaters and to the marinas itself. Because being sustainable, that's something that needs to happen on both sides. So we really want to incentivize marinas and marina operators to become more sustainable. How does that work? On the one hand side, from 2023 on, from the season on, we will introduce a sustainability seal. That's a seal that the marina profile will get if they meet a certain criteria for being sustainable, some certain efforts uh, or in waste management handling or blackwater handling. Uh, and uh, really, um, if they are just doing their own part uh, in order to be sustainable, we will highlight that to our users. And that, of course, will set them apart visually um, in terms of sustainability on our platform. On the other hand side, we will also ask boaters to validate that. So once they have been in a marina, they will be able to tell uh, us and give us feedback. OK, is this marina actually behaving in a sustainable way? Is there proper waste ma um, handling um, management? On the other hand side, uh, we are part of ICOMIA, what Eden has mentioned before. So this is the International uh, Committee of uh, Marine Industry Associations. And amongst uh, with some other very innovative companies, we are currently working on a paper, a guide that is called the Smart Marina paper. And one part of that paper is also that we're really defining guidelines, um, a white paper, if you want to, might, might call it, um, that is telling marinas how to behave sustainable. So that's something that we're actively participating in, actively working on with other companies in a very, I would say, um, condensed working group. And we are very excited in bringing out these guidelines. But of course, as I said before, sustainability needs to be lived by everybody. So uh, we are not just telling the marinas in order how to behave sustainable, but we really also want to promote to the boaters a sustainable behavior and a sustainable life at sea. So how are we doing this? On the one hand side, within the marina, um, boaters will be highlighted, as I mentioned before, in a marina map uh, where they can dispose of their waste, um, how uh, they behave sustainably in the marina at sea, we will run awareness campaigns to those, to those 300,000 users and tell them, OK, what you have to do at sea and what you shouldn't do at sea. At sea, we are also highlighting from now on um, um, areas for no anchoring zones, um, natural uh, preservation areas, or national parks in order to also highlight that aspect. And um, in a way, also um, with uh, our historic data that we have collected in the past two years, we're also giving um, estimations of how busy a marina will be at a certain time um, in order that also boaters plan ahead their trip more efficiently. They don't have long waiting times. And that's just some of the features that we are starting to roll out this year. We have some nice things also uh, in store, but um, for now I will uh, stick to that and tell you a little bit about that. So actually, I think that was my five minutes. Um, 
thank you for being here once again. Um, happy to connect with all of you. And I think it's now time for the Q&A. So shoot your questions. Thank you. OK, I've been nominated. Um, <laughs> in terms of reach, uh, you didn't really explain where your free, free hundred, it was 300 Pfizer users? 300,000 users, yeah. Where are those geographically spread? Um, we have our core markets that are currently the Adriatic and the Mediterranean, and starting to become more and more the Mediterranean. But we really have boats from the whole continent of Europe. So everybody who goes boating in initially Croatia, and now also the rest of Mediterranean, eventually becomes or became a user of ours, and we are addressing those people. So nobody outside of Europe? Uh, we have some interna more international US uh, users, if they were on a sailing trip. Uh, and we actually also see some traffic from outside of Europe, uh, from people that are look like looking to go boating in Europe, that are actually also already using CZ to find uh, information about sailing destinations in, in, in Europe. I think Laurent has got a question. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. I would like to know, how do you address technically and commercially the challenge of ports utilization? Um, with the own data that we have collected so far. So as I told you before, uh, from 2020 on, we have had uh, a lot of users on the platform, and that has been growing steadily. And we just have some um, user behavior and also destinations where they have been going that we have tracked on our platform so far. So we will be using that data historic data in order to give estimates. Usually around that time, there's more traffic coming into the marina. You might want to come, come a little bit later, a little bit earlier, to uh, really reduce these holding times that you sometimes also have in front of a marina, where you have just boat after boat waiting to be docked. So this is something that we are trying to address with that data that we have collected so far. OK. More questions? Yeah, Emily? Yeah, um, can you tell us a little bit about um, your funding model for um, both currently, but also anything you see in the future where you think you could drive more revenue to be able mm -hmm. to scale? Mm -hmm. So we are really, um, you, you mean like how we make money, right? <laughs> so we are really user driven, uh, and CZ is free to use for the user, so we are not charging anything on top there. And we have a service, um, service fee model, uh, sorry, a commission model, I mean. We, we take a commission out of every transaction that is happening on our platform. Um, what is the biggest challenge that you had or you have right now and how you're going to tackle it? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that the digitalization inside of a marina, uh, it's happening, but it's in, in many places happening not as fast, especially as a tech company would hope for. So we really see marinas that have been operating with spreadsheets or operated by the the, the owner of the marina itself, and he is just doing his business with the radio and with maybe some emailing, and really convincing them that digital is the future, that also the younger users that are coming to the platform, they like to book it digitally, they like to book it online. That's something that's in some places quite challenging for us. Uh, but as you said, the industry is getting younger, so I hope <laughs> this is something where we can actively contribute towards. Um, I was wondering, like, what the ask is right now. Like, are you currently fundraising, and, and if so, how much are you raising, and yeah. stuff like that? Uh, we are currently uh, raising again for our seed round. Uh, our CEO Nick is actually here also, so really he's uh, he will be open to any fundraising questions. Uh, but we are now um, venture backed, um, and the seed round is coming in the next month, and we are actively seeking funding currently also. All right, thank you very much, Lucas. Thank you. you you stay here with me. Okay. Um, on stage um, until everybody is finished. Um, next one is uh, Michael, Michael Ahrens, or oh, he brought something. Uh, Clean Earth Rovers, the uh, right T-shirt already. Product, yeah, yeah you can. I'm gonna it. set this on the table over here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So I will sit there. I take care of it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, all the way from the U.S., uh, Michael, stage is yours. Awesome, wonderful. Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Ahrens. I'm the founder and CEO at Clean Earth Rovers. I'm very excited to be here at Boot to share our marine sustainability technologies with you about debris removal and water quality data. Every year, 11 million tons of debris enters our oceans, out of which 6.6 .6 million of that stays within coastal waterways around the world, having heavy impacts on coastal businesses and their ability to manage debris efficiently and effectively. 
Additionally, in the United States, harmful algal blooms like red tide and blue-green algae create massive adverse pollution events that harm and exacerbate that issue of efficiency and workflow within coastal businesses like marinas and municipalities. What we found during 150 customer discovery interviews is that marinas are mainly skimming trash out of the water by hand, and it's costing them anywhere upwards of ten to $20,000 in labor each year. Additionally, if they have refueling stations, any time that they drop fuel in the water, the US Coast Guard charges them a minimum of $5,000 fees for cleaning that up. Many of them have lost customers, and additionally, many of them have voiced their needs for water quality data throughout their facilities. And so, once that point of water quality data continued to pop up in our conversations, we realized that we weren't considering all of the stakeholders in this space. We started talking to coastal municipalities and homeowners associations as well. And what we learned is that currently they're collecting samples by hand by sending people down to the water and bringing that back to a lab. And most of them, if they are using remote monitoring systems, are spending upwards of $40,000 plus on these buoys. Um, and because algae blooms are such a out-of-control issue in the U.S., it's currently costing us $4.4 billion in economic damages every year. And oftentimes, many people are found hospitalized or their pets can end up dying with exposure to things like red tide or blue-green algae. And that's why we've created a uh, three-phase solution system where we have a Roomba, per se, for coastal waterways that picks up trash, dead fish, oil, and other marine debris from the water. And attached and equipped to each one of those is actually, an, this is the old design of the data pod. This is the new first production prototype that you guys are seeing for the first time, um, where that was now equipped to our trash collection device so that as we continue to launch these throughout marinas, we're building water quality data infrastructure as well. Um, and then giving those marinas a very holistic view on the health of their waters and the debris that they're pulling from them. Um, some of the key features of our what we call plastics piranha is that it is currently electric. It has an eight-hour runtime. It can hold up to 100 pounds of debris. It's fully autonomous through way waypoint navigations and mission tracking. Uh, the 100-pound bags have a disposable function to them, but you can still get five to ten uses out of it. And they're all equipped with the data pod services, like I said. And more on the data pod is. Right now, it's tracking five key metrics for water quality. It is solar powered and electric, and um, it's fully IoT enabled. As we continue to launch these throughout coastal waterways, the more historic data that we bring in, the more predictive analytics models we can also build towards actually notifying our customers when pollution events are going to happen before they happen. Um, so how we make money. The Plastics Piranha is a hardware as a service lease model, or we allow customers to buy it outright for $30,000. We also have some distributor deals in the work where we're working on minimum quantity orders of 10 at $30,000 as well. Um, we are the first group in America that is making devices like these. I know that Europe has some that are really starting to get off the ground, and we're very happy to see that the industry is moving in that direction. Um, in terms of the data pod, we also are selling it as a data as a service lease model where these buoys can be anywhere from 30 times cheaper than ex existing solutions. Um, like I said, where we really differentiate ourselves from our competitors is we focus on our technical abilities and being able to maximize the user experience where all of our competitors are great at collecting trash, but what we really focus on is integrating it into their workflow, minimizing the time of interaction with the devices. As well as the data, again, we're working on providing scalable, low-cost IoT solutions to avoid people going and picking up samples by hand. Um, right now, our beachhead market is currently focused in uh, the coastal US, so Florida, California, other northeast and south states, and right now, focusing on those marinas, homeowners associations, and municipalities, that's about a $300 million market. Um, just in January of this year, we have $300,000 plus revenue committed uh, from these three customers here. And we also have raised $100,000 in, uh, sorry, $130,000 in non-dilutive capital and $100,000 in angel capital. Um, we have a diverse team of background, or different founders from different backgrounds, experiences, uh, 
my co-founder and I both graduated from Xavier University, have been working on this since 2019. We brought Jonathan in in 2020. And then we have a couple other uh, early stage members who have also sold some startups of their own. Our advisory board is well seasoned through both big and small companies of all types of different backgrounds and almost nine different successful exits under our belts with a few different serial entrepreneurs. Um, right now we are looking to raise about $600,000 on a convertible debt financing and we're looking at an $8 million valuation cap for that. And some of the KPIs we're looking for that to get us to is roughly $100,000 in monthly recurring revenue over the next 12 months. And then from there, once we hit those milestones, look to raise a $3 million seed round at a future determined valuation. Um, and that's all. <laughs> thank you. Do you have any questions? All right. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Well done. That was a great presentation. Um, I'm curious, like, to what degree um, you're going to be focusing on, like, homeowners versus marinas. Um, uh -huh. And like, yeah, what percentage of like, effort you're spending on like, each of those markets? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so really, they are overlapping markets. Um, and I say that because when we start to integrate uh, the plastics piranha into different marinas, um, we're building data spots as well. So what we can do with that data information that we're collecting is then turn to the local municipality or the HOA and say, hey, we already have access to this. And if you are monitoring it by hand, you no longer need to do that, um, just by these data points. And so um, we're looking to scale it in that method. But then on the data side, uh, because this is obviously a modular system, it can be sold by itself, um, we're looking to expand on that as a, the after effect, right? Where we may have three or four plastic piranhas that are collecting data in one regional area. And the municipality may say, OK, well, we don't want three or four. We want 30, 40, 50 different data points. Um, and so that's where that comes in handy and can grow and scale very quickly. Uh, but overall, the, the long-term focus of where we see our growth and trajectory actually comes from the data. So. Um, thank you for the presentation. I think the problem was uh, presented very well. I'm just wondering uh, your personal um, connection to it, if you can share a little bit more about that. Yeah, of course. Um, so I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, which is landlocked in the middle of America. And by the time I was 18 years old, I had not ever heard of plastics pollution being an environmental issue. Um, so upon graduating high school, I very quickly became very passionate and almost obsessed with the problem and uh, entered into my undergraduate studying entrepreneurship and management where that was when, by my sophomore year, I really started to take this seriously. I had the idea, was kind of playing with it for two years at that point. And like I said, I always knew I wanted to be in startups and, and entrepreneurship, but I didn't really know where. So this fit perfectly. It was something that I'm truly passionate about. Um, and also, with, when it ties in with red tide or blue-green algae, those are problems that I'm firsthand familiar with, um, vacationing down in Florida seeing things like the fish kills in Sarasota and things like that. Um, both my co-founder and I are pretty, pretty familiar with that problem and how visible it is. So. Um, on the sort of waste collection side of things, oh. um, I know there's a, a challenge of how you design um, so that you can kind of collect big enough pieces, um, but also the small fragments, yeah. um, and then not interfere with any marine life at the same time. Can you tell us a little bit about your thought process in choosing your design? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so currently, our bag system is able to collect both macro and micro plastics down to you know, small pieces of styrofoam. And um, the bags, like I said, can hold 100 pounds of debris. Uh, they're removable. Um, you can shake them out, reuse them, whatever that might be. And the way that we have that system designed is really, like I said, so that there's versatility there. Um, we are looking into switching to infinitely reusable bags uh, just to fit more into that sustainability focus. Um, and then when it comes to marine life, we've actually never by caught any marine life, which is something that we're pretty happy about. Um, and we think the reason for that is, is just like a regular boat moving through the water, it scares them away, and their reaction isn't to actually go into it. It's just a flea. So. 
Okay. Just a question regarding your uh, market geographical focus. Do you focus only in the US as of today, or do you want also to expand to Europe? So Right now, for the boats, we're focused in the U.S., but the data, we are ready to talk about potentially expanding outside of the U.S. So. Um, given you're at boot and, yeah. par and you've got Beneteau, you've got Brunswick, and most investors are scared of hardware. <laughs> yes. Have you ever thought of actually integrating this into leisure craft and create a citizen science project for marina owners, say for freedom marinas or other work with boating companies rather than creating this yet another craft? Yes, that's a great question. Am I able to see my slides again real quick? Um, uh, thank you. Let me pull up our dashboard. Oh, here. So on our dashboard, you can see we have um, both the historical graphs and the data where uh, somebody from a science background will understand very you know, easily what these metrics mean. But somebody in the marina space who's looking at this for the health of their water and also for their customers is going to have no idea what some of these metrics actually are. I know, but you could, you could make it red or green going good or bad. Right. So, so giving them an interpretation of what the metric actually is saying and then also a a water score, like a uh, holistic score on if it's healthy or not to be in their water is kind of the approach that we're taking. But we're looking also to expand it out for like public, public uh, facing APIs and things like that in the future. Right, but you can put this on a boat. Yeah, yeah, you can put this on a boat. Um, we, I mean, that's how this works. We, we tow this on the Plastics Piranha. Um, when it's equipped with the trash collection device. Uh, so it, it is already attached to a boat. Um, whereas if it were going to a marina and they wanted one of their customers to use it or put it on a dinghy, um, they could do the same. Because we, we recognize that not every customer needs a trash collection device f to oh, collect right. data. Right. Have, have you pitched, the, pitched people just this rather than the not, no, not just on the data, uh, particularly just because we really like the holistic focus on both the waste that you can see and the waste that you can't see, um, and providing solutions for both. So. OK. Yep. Any more questions? No. Michael, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so they will manage. They will manage from there. Okay. Just leave the clicker there, and you can sit next to your uh, device. Thank you very much. Um, Third presentation is from Italy, Giorgio, where is he? There is Giorgio, from Tuscany, Livorno, am I correct? Yes? Yes. The hub of Perfect. yachting somehow. Um, you brought something as well, okay. Great. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's okay, or shall I take it? It's okay, it's okay. It's okay? Let's go right there. Thank you, Giorgio. Thank you. I bet if I invite you to think about a boat, any kind of boat, a sail one, a yacht, a cruise ship, most of you will be visualizing it in the middle of the sea, sailing. Am I right? Well, this is surely a nice picture, but if I have to tell you the truth, actually, boats spend the most of their time during the year at mooring. Hi, my name is Giorgio Cucce, and the co-founder and CEO of Ceres SRL an Italian innovative startup company that I have founded less than five years ago, in 2018. But why Ceres is born and what is its aim? Let's take a step back to when I was a child. I used to spend a lot of my time with my grandfather, who brought me sailing with him and has passed on to me the passion for the sea. Uh, it was on this occasion that I realized about all the problems related to standard mooring solution. So one day, while I was still an aeronautical engineering student, I came up with the idea of Sea Dump. Innovative shock absorbers that today are revolutionizing the boating and yachting world, and much more. Sea's journey has not always been like eating a piece of cake. 
As you know, funding and especially managing a startup requires a lot of energies. And, but all the efforts and sacrifices have been rewarded also by these results. Six international patents, two international trademarks, and two international utility models. And also several important prices, even internationally. But what problems our system can solve? Our shock absorbers achieve a technological and competitive advantage by addressing two concrete problems. First one, the safety of mooring and anchoring of any floating body, and the relative energy needs, generating sufficient energy to keep the onboard batteries charged or to supply power for pedestals integrated on the floating infrastructure. This is the solution. This is C-Dump Plus. The only one hydraulic and mechatronic dumper that safely moors boats of any displacement while harvesting green energy from wave-induced motion and reducing the risks of mooring breakage. As you are seeing in this brief video, there is a LED ring. It can change its colors to communicate different system status. Its main features are smart monitoring through a dedicated app where you can keep an eye on some of the key parameters, such as the status of the mooring lines, the status of the batteries, the energy produced, and so on. The energy recovery system working 24 hours a day. Real-time alerting system. If something goes wrong, in example, when there is adverse weather conditions, you will receive an instant alerting warning directly on your smartphone. But boats were not enough for serious ambitious targets. And for this reason, confident of the great potentialities of our technology, we have created a line of products for mooring and anchoring of floating structure of any dimension, in particular for arbors and marinas, for uh, eolic offshore platforms, for floating photovoltaic offshore platforms, and last but not least, for aquaculture plants. Here is a SIDAMP FX, a device based on SIDAMP Plus technology scale for bigger offshore floating uh, bodies. It is an hydraulic and mechatronic damper as well that harvests e energy from wave-induced motion and reduces the risk of mooring breakage, guaranteeing uh, the integrity of the mooring. Let's take a look at its distinctive feature more closely. Thanks to AI and based on the load that acquired, there is the system stiffness management capability. Multiple SIDAMP FX can be interconnected each other to manage and optimize the energy production. And thanks to this, the behavior of every anchoring as a smart grid, as a real smart grid. And limiting and monitoring uh, each loads on moorings by reducing the risk of breakage, you can obtain a predictive maintenance behavior over the time, over the year. And last but not least, the recovering of green energy production from the wave-induced motion. So Ceres, from the beginning, cares about the environment and takes care of it using only recyclable raw material for all its products. In example, we use only 100% biodegradable oil and concretely embracing uh, circular economies principles. Moreover, all CDAMP respects marine fauna. In example, they don't make any sound at all and preserve the seabed, not interfering with it. Last, this is a picture of my fantastic team made up of young and enthusiastic professionals we daily work side by side to get together serious our ambitious targets. Welcome the future of moorings. Go to the next level with us. Be safe, be smart, be serious. Thank you. Yes, any questions? Um, yes, uh, Clyde. I'll, I'll go. A um, couple of questions. Um, you, st you haven't stated any numbers here in terms of size of market. Yeah. Why? Because uh, I, I think that uh, it, it was uh, not the, the right uh, uh, moment to, to, to present this kind of number, but we can discuss. What, you know, okay. uh, it's uh, open, uh, open points to, to be discussed in, during the, the question time. <laughs> so what is your size of market? <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, we have a uh, uh, um, worldwide uh, market. We have uh, multiple targets because we have uh, two main uh, type of markets, the leisure one and the industrial one. In the leisure one, you know, you have uh, 32 million of boats 
over, over the world of different sizes. So uh, our products cover all these type of vessels, from the smallest one up to super yacht. So we have in our catalog uh, uh, um, models ready to be uh, sold in, through different uh, uh, market channels. In the industrial market, uh, we have it, it is uh, bigger uh, than the leisure one because, uh, as I have presented, we have uh, four different uh, uh, type of markets, and so it's uh, uh, starting from uh, each of these, uh, we can uh, discuss of the dimension of the market. I've, I've got another little small question. Um, wind farms. You mentioned wind farm moorings. Yes. Um, that's a decision which is usually made quite early on in terms of building wind farms. So how are you, since a lot of wind farms have been already built, how are you getting involved in those conversations with wind farm um, developers? We can be inserted uh, even in already existing uh, installation because we can retrofit uh, in the inside the installation, recalculating the mooring uh, uh, stiffness uh, uh -huh. and uh, uh, also thanks to the uh, adaptive feature of the uh, stiffness regulation, thanks to the uh, mechatronics uh, synergies, we can uh, uh, learn from the data and uh, adjust itself uh, the stiffness in order to optimize what is your uh, objective function. So you can... Uh, but have you talked to... Have you talked to who have you talked to in wind farms at the moment? Yes, we have been involved uh, in some big projects in the Italian uh, industry with big corporates and the uh, Centro Nazionale Cerchi Italiano. I'm uh, sensing I'm going to have to sign an NDA before I get any information out. <laughs> 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 Thanks very much. Cheers. Okay, you're welcome. Um, perhaps you can explain a, a little bit more about the sort of sustainability side of the solution as well. And, and I understand the materials, um, you know, are very much sort of recycled, thinking about circular economy. But are you able to expand any more on how um, it might protect or help the marine environment? Yeah, yeah, because we have, uh, I think, uh, since the beginning to combine in one product the solution of the two problems. So. Reducing the uh, risk of moving breakage, we can reduce the risk of uh, uh, damages. And, and at the same time, recovering green energy, we can uh, increase the uh, efficient way of using the energy inside the marina. Thinking about a smart grid. Uh, so you can recover green energy directly from the wave-induced motion using directly where you are recovering it. So this is uh, a sort of uh, uh, way of uh, reducing also the pollution. So the uh, emissions that, he, that are connected to uh, typical uh, activities inside the, the marina. And um, also from the circular economy point of view, all the material that we use, uh, that we have chosen, uh, uh, can be reused. For instance, stainless steel uh, can be refunded and reused for new products. So, uh, and the, the hydraulic oil inside is 100% biodegradable and is uh, obtained for more uh, than 70% from uh, vegetal uh, um, plants. So it's uh, something uh, that we, we care a lot, uh, and especially for uh, uh, the energy recovery uh, system point of view, that is uh, uh, a very uh, positive impact uh, on, uh, on the energy uh, usage inside the marinas. Great, thank you. Do, do you have some uh, KPIs about this energy production? Yes. And just the second question is, what are you looking for? In terms of KPI for energy production? What are you looking for in terms of capital or market expansion? Ah, in terms of uh, uh, capital, we, uh, we will uh, uh, open a, a Series A uh, in the next, uh, between the uh, end of 2033 and beginning of 2000. 24, in order to speed up the entrance on in the industrial markets, especially for uh, floating uh, offshore wind, uh, uh, photovoltaic. Uh, uh, we have already uh, installation on uh, each of these industrial markets. So we have already uh, started to uh, in concrete uh, installations in, uh, in each of these fields. On okay. energy, how much are you producing when you install a full marina, for instance? What is the scenario? It depends of uh, a lot of uh, parameters, as you can imagine. But uh, uh, when you install um, um, all the marina uh, in a, in a uh, real, uh, complete smart grid point of view, you can uh, obtain more than uh, 50 
percent of uh, energy efficiency uh, uh, increase. So even the time of return of the investment uh, is only a few years by integrating all the marina with our technology. Because there are multiple added value point of view that you have to take into account, uh, not only the energy point of view. Maybe the energy point of view is not the first on the, on the list. Um. Um, I really liked the use of video in your pitch, so that was good. Um, I'm wondering about the kind of business model and how you're generating revenue. I'm guessing, obviously, they pay to purchase the product, and then is there any kind of subscription aspect to it, or how's, what does the business <coughs> model look like? Yes, we have multiple uh, uh, business models, uh, selling directly the product, of course, but for the mechatronics, so the smart uh, models, we can also offer uh, a subscription in order to let you have all the data directly on your smartphone, especially for uh, marinas or even for uh, uh, who the, the companies that uh, uh, manage uh, important offshore wind uh, platforms, uh, uh, knowing what is the status, the health of the status of the uh, moorings uh, is very important. So it's a, a, pay, a subscription, a monthly, a yearly, or even uh, multiple year uh, point of view. So it's uh, some of this. Uh, and also, we are opening uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, services. Uh, after sale services and so on. Mm -hmm. And what's the like? What are the price points? Like, how much do you charge for the product and the subscription? Of course, this is uh, completely different from the uh, standard mooring uh, devices. Uh, we offer uh, these uh, products uh, with a premium price, but it's not so high because we are around uh, uh, 20, 30 percent uh, uh, premium price with respect to the standard mooring solutions. So it's uh, even a uh, price uh, competitive point of view. Thank you. Uh, as we are in booth, I'm just wondering what is the position of the project in terms of the industry, the recreational boating industry today? Are there any marinas using it? How many boats are actually connected to the? Yeah, we have thousands of clients already using this all over the world. We have uh, uh, an interesting uh, uh, distribu distributions uh, uh, ready. Uh, in uh, some of the main important uh, markets in Europe, uh, US, Australia. So uh, our uh, distribution channels is uh, fortunately growing uh, worldwide uh, constantly. And uh, we hope that also here at Booth uh, to have the occasion to meet other distributors that uh, have been uh, asked our products to be added to their catalog. So you are looking for marinas or end users, consumer to buy it right now? No, our business, main business model is B2B, of course. So we are main focused on distributors for the leisure markets and, uh, of course, for the industrial one, uh, for companies that uh, uh, are uh, interested to inserting uh, this technology in their uh, plants. Thank you. Welcome. OK, no more questions. Thank you, Giorgio. You'll join us here, please. Thank you. Join your colleagues, you can leave your device here. Yes, the clicker over there. Yes. No, it's fine. They will do it. All good. Thank you. Um, fourth and final presentation is from uh, Eduardo Godard van Hardenbroek, he told me. Thank you me. very much. Yes. Very good? Yeah, Correct? yeah, yeah. You did a great Perfect. job there. So, <laughs> stage is yours. After five minutes, I raise my hand, then you know you yeah, yeah, come yeah. to an end. Thank and you. And then I looked at right away, right? All right, so good, uh, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Godert van Hardenbroek. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of uh, Edorado Electric Power Boats. I'm here today with my co-founder, Giel, and uh, I will tell you about uh, what we're doing to uh, electrify power boating. So uh, the Edorado was really uh, founded by Giel and myself because we, have a, we share a passion for the being out in nature as children, we used to sail a lot, both of us. And, um, and also, uh, we're kind of uh, speed addicts. So we, uh, we set out to uh, electrify power boating uh, to make a performance without a trace. Is it going? So uh, the company was uh, founded by Gil and myself, and uh, we've started building the team and uh, getting some real key uh, players on board, key uh, mem team members. And uh, so why are we doing this? If you go fast with a powerboat, 
the, the, uh, the emissions and the energy consumption is just off the hook. It's just really, really high. And it's, if you compare it to, a, for instance, a passenger car, it's like 15 times more energy. And I'm not even talking about a very large boat. This is an eight-meter boat that we're comparing it with. So traditional power boats are really outrageous. And uh, it just feels wrong in this day and age to emit all this stuff and pollute the water like that. So what we see here in, in boat as well, we see a, a lot of electrification is happening, actually. So there's lots of personal watercraft. There is planing hulls. There's powertrains inboard, outboard. There's also water taxi mobility solutions happening. And we're active in the fast electric foiling space. And I'll tell a bit more about what that means. And there are roughly three players in the world. Eduardo, Candela is quite famous. And Navir is part, has been part of uh, Gabby's program. And um, so, uh, but, but what is the problem with going fast, actually? The, the problem with going fast is that it uses a lot of energy, as I mentioned. So if we compare the range in, uh, in to relative to speed, and you have a planing hull, so the white uh, dotted line is a planing hull, it's fine if you want to go slow, but as soon as you hit the throttle, the, the range just drops. It just uh, con grows exponentially. And the yellow line is what our boat does. So it's like s it more than doubles the range easily. Um, so we are convinced that hydrofoils are the solution for fast electric power boats. We think that over time, everything that is going fast will have a hydrofoil because it's just the laws of physics dictate that it's going to happen like that. It's just so much more efficient. And, and batteries really have a constraint with the, cons the energy density. So we've developed this uh, design with a fully retractable hydrofoil. It flies over the water. And it's also a really cool and new experience, actually. So it takes off. Yeah. So our goal is to develop the best in class technology and design. We've chosen for a canar hydrofoil um, uh, configuration, which is uh, the, actually the best possibility out there for efficiency and roll and height stability. It allows us to have a twin electric drive, which is really great if you have uh, maneuverability in a marina. It makes you feel like a king, you know what you're doing, right? And on top of that, we're building a really high-end luxury platform, so automatic swim platform, high-end interior, automatic electronic anchor, and all that uh, with a top speed of 38 knots and a range of 40 nautical miles. Something about the uh, retraction system. So hydrofoils, they stick out. So there's really a demand in the market to uh, reduce, to, to retract the systems. And we think we have the best, most beautifully integrated uh, retraction system, which will become very important over time in the market. We also created a patented safety system. So people have concerns about floating debris. And uh, we have created something that if there's an impact, it will protect the passengers so you don't have a sudden deceleration. I was told to wait. Yes. So we do all our software development in-house. We have a full glass UI um, that is developed by ourselves. And um, a lot of emphasis is the, use, the automatic control system, so the algorithm to make the boat fly stable. And uh, we've been developing a prototype, and we have more than 500 hours of testing with this uh, eight meter boat and uh, she's flying beautifully and it's really a, something special to experience flying over the waves. It's a completely new experience, there's no slamming, uh, yeah, it's really special. So about what we're doing at the moment, we're developing the uh, launch edition. We're in the process of building this. So we have uh, the, the molds are being produced. And uh, we're getting ready for, uh, to launch it at Cannes Yachting Festival in uh, September. That's our goal now. Um, something about the m market strategy. So we see growth in models. And also, at a certain point, that we can add uh, systems to third-party um, boat manufacturers, because we're so convinced that this entire market is going to shift this direction. So there's a big market opportunity. 
Um, I think I'm going to skip this for time's sake because uh, we're a bit uh, uh, constrained. About the ask. So we've been funded by private capital. Uh, until now, there's about three and a half million euros went into it. And uh, we're now working towards a Series A where that will allow us to uh, pr start a production and scaling up. And we're currently raising a bridge round of 1.75 million and to uh, go to Khan and start filling the order book. And this is kind of the last chance to get in at this level before it becomes more institutional. So um, that's it. We, uh, are, you are invited to join us on this journey, this exciting journey. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. yes. Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, I'd love to just hear a little bit about safety. Um, yes. Obviously, the speeds that yes. the vessel's going. Um, is there sort of extra you know, learning required to be able to drive at that speed? You know, If there was an accident, um, obviously, if you're in the boat, your risk is going to be higher. Also, reaction time of getting out the way of other water yes. users. Waves. You had lots of very calm waters in your. Yeah, 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 that's true. All of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About that. Yeah, so um, it's not hard to operate because the computer does it. It's not like a foil board, for instance, where the the foil board, like you're the controller, but our computer does it. So it's a flying robot in that sense. Um, when it, with regards to um, response time or things going wrong. It's, um, we call it flying. It's flying through the medium water, but we're not at 10,000 feet. So it's, you, you land quite quickly, and that will slow down the boat a lot. So uh, anything goes wrong, it's land. And that will slow down uh, and, and calm things down a lot. And um, yeah, what, what else? I think it's a fast boat. You need a, you need a, dry, a license. What, uh, it's not, you, you cannot just go out on that without a license. So do you see them being used um, sort of recreationally at the same level that many other boats are being used today? Or would th it be a vessel that would be used by someone who's more experienced, perhaps doing it for a living, rather than just on the odd weekend? Oh, no, it's definitely a, f a f leisure boat. Yeah, no, we, 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 we see thousands of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's, you don't have to have a, that kind of... A, Training, but we see uh, market opportunities in in different directions as well. But we start with a high-end luxury l leisure market because people are willing to pay the premium. They're not just doing the calculation, you know, whether it's the ROI is good. It's also more a passion thing or a statement about their lifestyle. And uh, but we see adjacent markets like patrol boats or navy or mm -hmm. guiding uh, boats in in the, in, the, in large ports. So we see a lot of things happening yeah. coming after that. Yeah. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm yeah. curious what the um, price point is and how that compares to some of the like, more similar competitors that are on the market, like Candela and Navier and stuff. Yeah, so we, we uh, sell the uh, 8S for €425,000, which is uh, a bit on the higher end compared to Navier and Candela. Um, uh, and it's, uh, we focus more on uh, luxury design and finish. The, the, qu the quality of the, the build will be very high. But it's not that far off. We're, we're kind of close together. And if you compare it to, that is, it's kind of comparable to uh, a, a nice Riva, a, a new Riva. Mm. So it's there, sort of thereabouts. There is, there's definitely a market for that, for that segment. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you have already some pre-ordered? Uh, well, we have so, uh, we have some pre-orders, but uh, to be straight, we don't have an order yet. So we're just we think uh, actually we had some pre-orders, but the more concrete it becomes, uh, people would just want to see the boat. So we want we're building it, and uh, that's that's what we're working towards. Yeah. Which market do you consider as the first market to come? So the the the. Primary uh, launch market is Alpine lakes, so Lago di Garda, maybe Lake Zurich, maybe Starnbergersee. So lakes is 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 our primary market. In the U.S., we have some, we have a distributor in the U.S. already in Tahoe. We think Tahoe is a perfect spot. 
And uh, we were there as well with a little booth, and uh, the response has been very positive. So those are the, our initial markets. And then the 12-meter boat is, some, is, a, is a boat that's very suitable for uh, Mediterranean. So that, that'll give us another push into a new market. Yeah. Yes, Pink. please. Oh, there's a, somebody from. There's a, a question okay. from the audience. Um, Maybe the okay. mic. <laughs> I don't yes, know okay. if, how does this work. Is it allowed? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, what is the lowest speed that allows you to fly over the water? I'm thinking about uh, use on speed reduced uh, waterways. Yeah, this, this is an interesting point because this, the waterways are, are always uh, limited because of the wake. The speed limit is because of the wake, and our boat pr produces hardly any wake. So there's always a debate. But uh, the, sl the slowest, it'll fl it takes off at about 17 knots, and it'll fly con right at about 20 knots. It cruises at 25. We like 25 knots. But this is not a very slow boat, so to be honest. <laughs> OK, yeah. Um, thank you for the presentation. I'm, I'm wondering, you mentioned the Hydrofall is a totally new experience, and I totally agree yes. with that. Do you think this is the opportunity to bring new customers to the industry, or do you think we need to convert the existing customers to try new things? So I'm going to go back anyway. Because this is the sort of the, the blue ocean story. Is it working or not? Yes, with red. You go back. Yeah, red. So, so yes. So, so we're competing with conventional, so red ocean, so conventional power boats. Um, but we think it's really an opportunity that to create, a, that there is a blue market, blue ocean market there. So people that maybe will be turned off by the idea of having a power boat because they think it's not part of their identity. But uh, it, it actually, we think that it allows for a sort of higher uh, annual sales than most traditional power boats in this higher luxury segment. I mean, we put this 20 boats per model per year. If you are looking at the sort of the real high-end boats, I won't mention names, but that are really the high-end ones, then 20 is already a lot. But we think actually we can do more than, we can do 20 or 30 models, bo boats per, per model per year because of this, yes. Yes, thanks. Um, so I'm a son of a speedboat racer and spent you are a, sort a, of a son of a power boat and a speedboat racer. So I spent my childhood on these boats. Cool. Um, and I would just really want to follow up the safety yes. question. Yes, go ahead. Because uh, have you actually try, did any kind of trials on uh, the hydrofalls being hit, being broken, uh, speed, resistance? I know you have a patent, but have you done any kind of on water experience with us? Well, we have 500 hours of flying, and we've had many failures, I can tell you. But have you done the uh, obstacle in the water breaking off the hydrofoil? So that we have, not, we have not done that, no. Yeah. But uh, we've, ha we've done something similar where we release the, the bow foil. The, the, our main consideration is the bow foil, because yeah. it'll be the first thing that'll hit something. and. Um, the, 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 the patent is very much about, if you, if you were to move a foil like this into the water, it'll become like a water anchor, yeah. and you'll have a very high deceleration. And, and our patent is around that it'll, it'll slide through the water, so it'll lose all its grip. Right, but what happens if the obstacle completely severs that first foil? Yeah, so then, then if you're going 40 knots, then you come to the second uh, strut. But it's obviously, if that's going to hit, that's going to hit the propeller. Sorry, I'm going very technical. But it's going to hit the second foil as well. Yes, but, but the landing is quite quick. I, uh, it, it is, uh, and uh, so there is a scenario. But what's well, the we, we have, OK, so we, we're going to talk about it. But we have sort of levels of, of dest destruction, <laughs> if you want to say. So there is, there is the, if you f uh, slam into a concrete block under the water, yeah. The, the stern foil is going to break out in a controlled way, so you don't have a leak compartment, but you're going to lose the main foil. And what's the g-force of the landing on the water? Um, that's very low, actually. I did that. It's not, that's not, because you, the, you, you only fall this, mu this far. You don't oh. fall so far. But you're so falling at speed. Huh? I don't know. Sorry. It's, it's, the <laughs> it, it's the deceleration that's the problem. So the yeah. 40 knots is the problem. It's not the height. Yeah. So, we, so that's why we break everything off. Like, we either we do it controlled if it's within margins, and if it's above a certain threshold, 
And we say, okay, you know, save the passengers. So it's, yeah. I don't hope that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, Godet. All Thank right. you very much. So that was the final presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, one question for me. Um, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, one question about Dutch build. Or yes. Do build? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We okay. uh, we we are based in the Netherlands, in Dordrecht, south of Rotterdam, mm -hmm. and it's all Dutch built. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Please take a seat. Yes. And we'll, do. Um, right. we'll have a break for five, seven minutes, so the jury will discuss, and then one of the ladies will announce the winner. Yeah. So please stay here. Five to ten, seven minutes. Um, it's not just a sticker you will win. You can put on your website. It's a real prize uh, sponsored by Boot Düsseldorf. Yeah. Okay. Um, the jury said they need just two more minutes. Um, or three, five, one, one. Okay. Oh, well, it's not easy. But please stay here. We have a decision soon. Thank you. Okay, perfect, finish. So the guys were already asking, okay, the prices and the funding, 1.7 million. I said, no, not, not that much, but um, no, the winner, uh, I will announce it uh, probably, the winner will get a free stand here at Boat Düsseldorf in 24. Um, the ground floor, I mean, the stand building is always individual, but um, Boat Düsseldorf sponsored this for the winner, so you can plan already your trip, the winner, exactly for, for 24. Um, very generous, I think. And uh, who will announce who the winner? Then Gary, join me here on stage. And maybe not just put out the name, but say, OK, this is what we liked cool. about it. Yeah, OK. So we judged based on um, the quality of the innovation and how sustainable we think the solutions are. Um, and ultimately, we decide, should I just announce who, who we chose? Yeah? Yes. OK. Ultimately, we chose CRES. All right. Congratulations. And um, just for some context, we felt that your solution is like truly innovative in the sense that um, there isn't really anybody else doing that or addressing that part of the market. Um, and we feel that it would have been interesting to have a bit more data and statistics yeah, in the course. presentation, just in terms of like how much energy is actually being generated and, and just to get a bit more of like, you know, nitty gritty, but we felt that um, ultimately it was a great product. Thank you, Thank you very much. Really appreciate Perfect. It. Big applause Thank for you. CRES, Giorgio. Thank you. And Thank for, you. for all the other uh, companies and uh, thank you very much it was very impressive um, and uh, Godard has to invite me then uh, when the first one is ready yeah thank you